Hi friends, quite a long time ago a video was published where we showed the secondary use of the old computer power supply. A link to that video can be found in the description. This video will also be about that topic, but now we will make not one, but as many as three constructions with components of the old computer power supply. I thought for a long time what to show this time so as not to be repeated, because at different times I showed all sorts of designs that could be assembled from the details of such blocks. As a result, I found circuits that will be useful in everyday life, and most importantly, they will be simple and affordable for repetition. The first design is made on five low power transistors on the NPN structure. Unfortunately, I didn't find the source, but apparently the circuit was copied from the factory device and ended up on the internet. This is a short circuit detector or indicator of damaged windings. In general, an irreplaceable thing that can very quickly diagnose the rotor and stator of any engine for a short circuit. If the rotor is OK, the green LED is light up. If there is a short circuit, the red LED is on. Everything is very simple. The circuit consists of two parts, a simple transmitter based on a self-oscillator and a receiver. The circuit has two inductances of similar sizes, a tuning resistor, preferably multi-turn, for adjusting the sensitivity, transistors and so on. All components except the LEDs and tuning resistor can be found in the computer power supply. Transistors aren't critical at all. Any low-power NPN transistors are suitable. I assemble the circuit on the usual components. The board has an elongated shape for ease of operation. You can download my version of the board along with the full archive from the link in the description. In the description for this video, you will find a folder with Gerber files for ordering a printed circuit board at the factory from our sponsor, PCBWay. All you need to do is simply upload a folder to the company's website to select the necessary options and pay for the order. The company also offers manufacturing of SMD stencils made on high-precision laser machines, as well as the complete assembly of your design. High-quality printed circuit boards of any complexity and size. You will find a link to the PCBWay website in the description. The circuit works with a wide range of ratings of the components. Chokes aren't critical. They can be wound on ferried dumbbells or on roads. Both shapes can be found on the boards of computer power supplies. Of course, the old winding must be removed and the new one wound. The first inductor has an inductance of 2.2 millihenry. In my case, the inductance is less, only 1000 microhenry. It was wound with a wire of 0.05 mm. After winding, we put on heat shrink and the choke is ready. Inductance of the second choke is 470 microhenry. It will work with a spread of 30 to 50 percent. This was verified. My choke has an inductance of about 550 microhenry wound with a 0.2 millimeter wire. In the case of both chokes, the wire diameter can be from 0.05 to 0.3 millimeter, but it is better to take 0.1 or less to fit the desired number of turns. The circuit is conveniently powered by a 3 volt lithium tablet. The consumption current is scanty. The finished board for reliability can be put into heat shrink. Adjustment is done as follows. We take a serviceable rotor from some engine and bring it closer to the chokes of the circuit so that there is a gap of a couple of millimeters between them. We supply power to the circuit. If the red LED is on, Turn the trimmer until the red turns off completely and the green starts to glow. Next, we take any bare wire and close the lamellas between each other, thereby simulating a short circuit and rotate the rotor as shown. In certain positions of the rotor, the circuit will fix a short circuit. The red diode will instantly light up. This circuit will easily determine the short circuit also in the stator winding. In general, a useful thing. The idea for the next design was born after I saw a powerful 40N03 field effect transistor near rectifier diodes. I note that, as a rule, in a cheap computer power supply at that place is set another rectifier in the TO220 case, but in this case, FET. 
The circuit is something like a solid-state relay for direct current, contains just a few details. A PC817 optocoupler, a pair of resistors, and a field effect transistor. How does it work? From a low voltage source, 12 volts is applied to the lead of the optocoupler. It is like a coil in the case of a conventional relay. The lead lights up and therefore the optocoupler transistor is triggered. The power to which the load is connected through the open transistor of the optocoupler comes to the gate of the field effect transistor. As a result, it will work and through its open channel the ground will connect to the load and the latter is activated. The specified resistor is needed to discharge the gate capacitance after turning off the circuit and completely locking the transistor. Another resistor is a limiter for the gate. The optocoupler PC817 can be found on the computer power supply board near the standby transformer. There it is involved in the feedback circuit. You can do without an optocoupler in this circuit, but it provides galvanic isolation so that the control circuit isn't connected to the power circuit, exactly the same as in the case of a conventional electromagnetic relay. The advantage of the circuit is that it is eternal because there are no moving parts. A few words about the heating of the switching element. This is a field effect transistor which in this circuit is fully open. The 40NO3 transistor has a fully open channel resistance of about 12 milliohms. For example, when a current of 10 amps flows through it, according to Ohm's law, about 1.2 watts will be dissipated on the transistor. In this experiment, a 9 volt battery is powered on an optocoupler LED and a powerful lamp from a movie projector is used as a load. Power to the lamp is supplied from the laboratory unit, on the ammeter of which we will see the current flowing in the circuit and it about 10 amps. All these 10 amps flow through a field effect transistor and pay attention, it is without a radiator. I calmly touch it with hand. It is slightly hot, but it doesn't burn fingers. And 10 amperes is not the limit, far from the limit. Here it can flow about 30 amperes, but in this case, the FET must be installed on the radiator. Note, this circuit is designed to operate in low voltage circuits with a voltage of 10 to 20 volts. Moreover, the input can't be fed below 10 volts because in this case, insufficient voltage will be applied to the gate of the FET and it will not be fully opened. This will lead to an increase of the resistance of the open channel and to strong heating. The resistance value of 12 milliohm of the open channel specified by the manufacturer is obtained only if 10 volts are applied to the gate. If you plan to use this circuit at currents of more than 7 to 8 amps, then you need to install the transistor on a small radiator. Recommended to choose transistors with the smallest possible resistance of the open channel. The smaller it is, the lower the heating. The device is made on a small printed circuit board. Please note that the circuit doesn't have protection. Therefore, in series with the load, I highly recommend installing a fuse with the necessary current. In future videos, we will assemble a solid-state DC relay with all the protections. A video on this topic is already being prepared. Well, the last circuit is built on the basis of the LM339 chip which include four separate voltage comparators in one housing. This chip also can be found in cheap computer power supplies and it usually sets next to the PWM controller. And we also need a TL431 voltage reference source, which can be found in any computer power supply. The circuit is a simple timer or a delay at startup. It can be used everywhere, for example, in powerful power sources where a smooth start is needed. Such power sources have capacious electrolytic capacitors and at the time of connecting the source to mains, the charge current of the capacitors is huge. In order to eliminate inrush current, capacitors aren't charged directly, but through resistors or a thermistor. As soon as the capacitors are charged to a certain value, the soft starter relay is activated and the mains power is supplied to the circuit not through a thermistor but through a closed relay contact. The soft start circuit just provides a delay in the relay operation so that the capacitors have time to charge. 
In our device, only one comparator channel is involved. The reference voltage generated by the TL431 source through a voltage divider is supplied to the non-inverting input of the comparator. A capacitor is connected to the inverse input of the comparator, which is discharged at the initial time, therefore the voltage at the non-inverse input is greater than at the inverse and we have nothing at the output of the comparator. If we turn on the switch, the capacitor will start slowly charging through the resistor. As soon as the voltage on capacitor is slightly more than the reference voltage, a power source ground will instantly appear at the output of the comparator. This will lead to the unlocking of the PNP transistor, in the collector circuit of which you can connect, for example, the coil of an electromagnetic relay to control other loads, including mains load. The capacitor charge time depends on the resistance of the resistor and the capacitance of the capacitor. And with these component values, that time will be approximately 8 to 9 seconds. Another resistor is for discharging the capacitor after turning off the timer. This is necessary so that when restarting the capacitor was already completely discharged, otherwise the timer response time will be reduced. Yes, you can build a timer on specialized microcircuits like NE555, but we take spare parts from the computer power supply. This circuit has many advantages over simple timer circuits on a pair or three transistors. Due to the use of a reference source, the working time will be the same in different ranges of the supply voltage, and this is very important. Of course, based on the components of computer power supplies, you can make a lot of things. I just showed some of the simple designs that everyone can do. And most importantly, the shown circuits, in my opinion, will be useful in everyday life. All necessary links, including the project archive with the diagrams and printed circuit boards, as always are in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video. On this, I say goodbye. Until next time, with you was Kasyan TV.